Will they be able to get their guys in position to score? Because remember, Florida State, they may be 0-4, but they're still long, they're still athletic, they can still get after you. Well, the Knowles are coming to the floor tonight. They are wearing their Native American Heritage jerseys tonight. Of course, this started back a couple of years ago. This is the 10th consecutive year that Florida State is honoring not only the Seminole tribe, which is such a very important part of what they do, but also Native Americans and the Aboriginal youth as well. Mercer in the black. Matthew Cleveland, the ACC's sixth man of the year, had it on the perimeter. And James Breeding tonight with Ron Groover and Jenna Renault whistles a foul. And it's off the ball on Darren Green Jr. It will be his first. And a look at the Mercer lineup featuring Luis Hurtado Jr., who is their leading scorer, along with Kamar Robertson. Those two guys toward the top of the car. And here immediately you see that Florida State pressure we talked about. Fall away, that's McCrary. Jalen McCrary is a transfer from South Florida, started his college career at South Carolina, and he puts the Bears on top. Two to nothing. Mercer's here, they've lost four straight and eight of their last nine road games, dating back to last year's campaign, which saw them finish at 16 and 17 and seventh in the Southern Conference. Long two out front is good. Opening night shot for Cameron Fletcher. And that's a good sign. Fletcher is a guy, I think, who has to be able to score for Florida State to have their most success. Hurtado cannot finish on a quick drive. Naheem McLeod back in the lineup, grab the rebound. Yeah, it's hard to finish with a 7-4 guy in there. Inside quickly, the easy miss. Fletcher couldn't finish it. And here are the Bears. Hurtado, Zanzoni. A, a freshman from Charlotte by way of Greensboro Day is fouled on the three. And Fletcher draws his first. That's the second on Florida State. West disappointment for Florida State that they weren't able to score, but it's a good sign that they got out and got the shot close to the basket. And Zanoni, he comes in with the reputation as an outstanding three-point shooter, outstanding shooter overall, although in his last game against Winthrop, he was 0 for 9. Yep. So Michael Zanoni averaging almost 20 minutes of ball game, misses for the second time this year at the line in 10 tries. He knocks that one down. And of course, Florida State's led by 74-year-old Leonard Hamilton. We had a delightful conversation with him today, covered a lot of areas about these first four games and his 21 seasons here, and really his 35 years of building programs in some respect too, Dan. Well, it's hard not to have a pleasant conversation with Leonard Hamilton. He's, he's such an engaging guy. Tied at four. A couple of free throws from Zanoni, basket from McCreary, and Florida State's got a couple of field goals as well. Florida State really working hard to pressure the ball. Kamara Robertson in the corner. Three balls, Zanoni. That was really a good job by Robertson to recognize that even though he had an open three-point shot with dribble penetration, he could get Zanoni a better one. Three-point lead early for the Bears. They lob in from McLeod, McCreary on the hip. Out of the corner, Fletcher, three ball to tie. Fletcher is actually a pretty good catch and shoot guy. Wes, he's not a high percentage three point shooter this year, but he's a good catch and shoot guy. And you talk about a catch and shoot guy under pressure, how about Robertson? Yeah. 11 of 19 now from behind the line, Dan. Here's Mills trying to find an alley. The scoop. McLeod inside battling and hit the underside of the basket. Last touch by Florida State. Ron Gruber going to award it to Mercer very quickly. Jalen Worley out of Philadelphia into the ball game, sophomore. And uh, we also get our first look at the freshman Tom House from Dayton, Ohio, who's averaged about six minutes the last couple of games. Wes, one of the problems that the Seminoles have had early has been point guard play. And Mills is not really a point guard. He's a scoring guard. He's doing the best he can. But in situations like that, he drives in, he draws the defense. He wants to shoot the ball. You've got to be able to pass it to somebody in there. Yep. Here's Robertson, who just knocked down the triple. House out front to guard him. And that's not a criticism of Mills. He's a guy who's wired to score, and they're asking him to do a little bit different thing. 
Ball got knocked away. Hurtado five to shoot. Here's Robertson. Kick out. Three ball from the right. And that is Sean Walker Jr. His eighth triple of the year. Well, Wes, as advertised, we talk about their ability to shoot the three, and they've had a couple different guys knock them down. Worley. Here is Cleveland on the drive, and he'll take the bump and the foul from Hurtado. But the Bears are already striking gold, Dan. Three threes for Mercer already. But the Bears are reacting to the pressure defense. If you can beat the pressure, you're going to find an open shot if you can find the open man, and that's what Robertson did. Great job to get into the lane. And we got changes all around. Ja Quinones, a freshman from Orlando, has checked in wearing zero for Mercer. Well, they don't want her Hurtado picking up a second foul early. Mm -hmm. Worley. Out front, Darren Green Jr. And baseline Cleveland for the easy dunk. Sophomore from Atlanta on the board. And I wrote Matthew Cleveland's a heck of a player, but I think he's best in the attack, just like that. He's worked on his three-point shot, but he needs to be attacking the goal. Ball got knocked away. House couldn't recover. Cameron Corrin has also come on the floor for the first time tonight for Florida State, wearing number three. There's a drive. Rebounded by House. Now you got to push it. Outlet for Green. Trying to get around Zanoni. Fall away. And it fell off the iron, and it got touched in the cylinder, said James Breeding. So it will be basket interference and belong to Mercer. Bears protecting a four-point lead early in Tallahassee. Find an open three-point shooter. Greg Gary, in four years in Macon, has done a very nice job. Tonight coaches his 91st game with the Bears. He's won 50. You see the first ever SoCon championship game in the, a couple of years ago. He's got a terrific resume, by the way, of guys he's worked with and where he's worked, and most recently at Purdue with Matt Painter. Wow, man, he had some success with Matt Painter. It was funny. He told us before the game that he basically was in charge of the Purdue offense, and they came in here to play one of those really good Florida State teams, and he said he had his game plan all worked out. We're going to run this and run that. And he said they got to halftime, and they realized the Florida defense was so good, they couldn't run anything. Yeah. And so all they said, guys, go out and play. You know, a couple of basic things. Let's find some open spots. Quinona spins in traffic, had it swatted away from behind by Cleveland. Recovered by Cameron Corrin. And here is Worley on the drive. Kick into the corner. House thought about it. Now tried to re-skip it and turned it over. So the Knowles give it away, trailing four. And Quinona stepped on the far side, out of bounds in front of the Florida State bench, but Matthew Cleveland denied Mercer at the basket a moment ago. Well, one of the things that has characterized the Florida State defense is the ability to pressure the ball once it gets inside. They don't have like five seven-foot guys like they usually do, but they can still contest shots. Hurtado has returned. Luis Hurtado Jr. wearing 11 for the Bears with Canonis, and we also see Jalen Cobb, a Fordham transfer for the first time on the floor for Coach Gary. House working off the dribble. Look at Worley, the drive and basket. Nicely done. Jaden Worley's first basket. And Worley, he plays sort of the same way as Caleb Mills. He wants to attack the basket. And taken away by Cleveland. Has a man with him, he will scoop it and draw the foul. Matthew Cleveland will get a couple of free throws and a chance to tie the ball game here. This is really a nice job by Worley to get through traffic. And then Cleveland, we talked about the defense, and it's hard to throw those long passes against these Seminoles. Really good anticipation by Matthew Cleveland. So here's Cleveland 67% at the free throw line, which is identical to where Florida State is as a squad through the first four games. A year ago, the ACC sixth man, and the free throw good. Hit one of the iconic shots in the league a year ago, that winner at Virginia. It's interesting to read some of his comments after, you know, Dan, like a lot of guys in college basketball have success. You think about, do I need to, you know, take the next step? Do I want to come back? He, he embraces the college experience, but he said the other thing is, 
I'm about winning. I want to win. That's kind of what his pedigree was coming out of high school, and that's a big part of what and Leonard Hamilton was talking about him specifically today, as you see McCrary knock down a two. Matthew Cleveland's going to have to be a guy that might have to lead as a sophomore here. They don't have as many older guys as traditionally Florida State has had. No, you're right, Wes, and Matthew Cleveland's philosophy about winning, that sort of characterizes what a lot of people around college basketball call the Florida State model that Leonard, Leonard Hamilton has built here. You get a bunch of guys who are willing to go at it for four, four and a half minutes at a time and then come out of the game. They don't care if they're playing a lot of minutes, you know, they play 24 minutes then that's fine but you play a lot of guys they get after you and all they want to do is win Morley missed the first end of the two second foul by the way on Quinonis a moment ago so here comes a full-blown line change for Florida State Fletcher Mills are back first look of the night at Deontay Green Naheem McLeod's come back and uh, Chandler Jackson waits at the table right there with Leonard Hamilton for Jalen Worley to finish his second free throw. And he gets the ride. Worley's got three. And here comes Jackson, the freshman from Memphis, who played two minutes the other night. You can see the right thumb is bandaged up. He had a pretty good injury. It's cost him a lot of time. And there's a bump and a foul on Jackson, trying to challenge the inbounds pass for Walker. So the young man who's the number two player in the Volunteer State, top 50 nationally, comes onto the floor and picks up his first person. Well, Wes, he was a very highly touted prospect, as you just mentioned, and he was a highly touted prospect at the point guard position, yep. and that's a place where Florida State could really use him. Front court, here's Hurtado. One point Mercer lead. Walker catch and shoot. That's partially blocked by Fletcher, and we're going to whistle in a foul. Inside, James breeding tonight with Ron Groover and Jenna Renault on the whistle. And the foul is going to be on Deontay Green, a freshman at 6'10 from Asheville, North Carolina. It's the fourth on Florida State. Now they got the foul there, but they also got the block on that three-point yep. shot. The Seminoles doing a really nice job flying at those three-point shooters after giving up three of them early. Hurtado, quick entry pass for Robertson out front. This is Cobb. Jalen Cobb, his fifth three of the year is his first point tonight. And the fourth different guy who's made a three. Four point lead for Mercer. Mills. This is Green. And now going to work is Fletcher. 12 to shoot, and here's Jackson out front. Left hand drive, pushed it up, blocking call on Robertson. It'll be his first. It's the fourth on the Bears. Free throws coming, but how about the three a moment ago out of the offense? Well, again, you have the defense collapses after that inbounds play, and Cobb is another guy. He's a little slowed by a knee injury, but he's a guy who can make a three as well. You mentioned so there's four threes, and that's by four different guys. Chandler Jackson, one of two at the free throw line so far in the young season. Played just a couple minutes the other night against the Gators. Knocks down the free throw. Look now, this young man, 6'5", 215 pounds. Physically, Dan, he's ready to go. He looks like a player, that's for sure. Second one bounced out. But he needs some time. Yeah. You know, not only is he a freshman, but he's missed a lot of practice time with that thumb injury. Well, unfortunately, time is something you don't have when the year starts, right? You don't have much more than about four days at any given stretch. And, you know, Leonard Hamilton's talking about the combinations and the challenges with the injuries. I mean, we haven't even gotten into the, you know, the Jalen Ganey injury and all the things that go with that in terms of post play and things of that nature. And it's kind of handcuffed this team early. Here's Mill, backdoor cut, Jackson. Nice skip for Fletcher and a three. Got it. Cameron Fletcher's got eight to lead Florida State. And he is shooting the ball with a tremendous amount of confidence, Wes. Sure is. Fletcher's hot, a pair of threes, and a regular field goal. And at the other end, Walker answers. Greg Gary told us today that he thought Sean Walker had to play well today. Yep. And Back in front go the Bears. The young man has responded so far. 
15 to shoot for Mills. McLeod trying to help. And that's going to be a block. So the call will go on Cobb for the block. It'll be his first. And Florida State has done a nice job forcing defensive adjustments by Mercer. That was a great play by Jackson in there to catch the ball in traffic and find the open man. That's what you expect from your point guard. And Jackson executed that play perfectly. Of course, it always helps when the guy you pass it to makes the that the back end always. Yeah. Good <laughs> Everybody looks better. Fletcher sizes up Craig and missed it. Got his own rebound and score. Now, Wes, you watch as McLeod sets a screen out at the top. Craig is playing way back in the lane. Yep. And there's going to be some opportunities for the Seminoles. See Robertson trying to find a crease. Cobb back out front. Robertson cuts it loose. And the rebound for Green. Here's Fletcher. Knowles trying to pick up something in transition. Mills skips for the corner. Jackson launches. And seven foot four, David Craig from South Africa grabs the rebound for the Bears. Another three, and Craig going to be called for the push inside <laughs> on McLeod. First on Craig, six on Mercer, breaking the action in Tallahassee. Bears by one. It's a the guy that comes in as their third leading scorer, has not shot the three well so far this year, but he's knocked down both of his three-point efforts tonight. He's been ready, he's been confident, and this is a play where he just follows his own shot. So made two twos and two threes. Looks pretty good on the offensive end. Plus, he's got a blocked shot. Kind of looking at some of the notes and the details. You see the four of six that features the two triples for the uh, St. Louis product. By the way, he uh, averaged seven points, four rebounds a year ago, but a dozen and six rebounds in the last six games where he posted four double-figure efforts a year ago for Leonard Hamilton. Wes, you're talking about the relative youth of this Florida State team. Fletcher's another one of the older yeah. guys. He's yep. got to assume a leadership role, and today he's leading by example. Yep, so far you're right. Deontay Green on the floor. Fletcher, McLeod, Mills, Jackson for Leonard Hamilton. Left-hand turn, Naheem McLeod. Nicely done by the junior from Philadelphia for his first point. Just uh, his second field goal of the year. Curry's only six feet eight, and McLeod did a nice job catching the ball close to the basket and then just putting it in the basket over top of him. Yeah, Greg Gary took the big seven-footer, David Craig, off the floor for Mercer during the timeout. There's Walker, a high hanger, fell off the back iron. Here's Jackson, nicely done. Fletcher in transition. Green. Walker trying to close out Cameron Fletcher. That's a situation where the ball needed to move, Wes. Mills, and the rebound pulled away by Green. And Cobb is hurt. Yep, Cobb shaking up. Here's Green for three, missed badly. A third try for Florida State on the Fletcher offensive rebound. Mills. Little spin in the lane, and couldn't finish it. Walker had it. Now we're going to get a whistle, and the foul will be tagged to Florida State. Well, Cobb, Cobb is going to have to come out of the game for Mercer. Yep. I think they're going to put this on Deontay Green. But Ron, Ron Gruber whistled a foul. Yes, Deontay oh. Green. Yep. So it's on Deontay Green. It's his second. Well, West, but the one thing you see a convention over there at the scores table with Green and Jackson being able to play. Suddenly, Leonard Hamilton has 10 scholarship guys. He can rotate right. in and out, and he's played 10 guys here in the first nine and a half minutes of this half. Yeah, when Florida State is at full tilt the last few years, we've all had our, you know, our fun talking about the hockey line change at the Seminole bench. Well, when you have the depleted numbers, Dan, and the depleted experience from what this program is, that makes it a little dire at times, and that's a reflection of maybe the first four, too. And you see nobody going to the offensive boards for Mercer. They're really concerned about getting back, preventing transition. House. This is Darren Green on the lob to Corin. Cameron Corin 
Texans averaging nine a game is on the board. Florida State in front three. Question Greg Gary's team's going to have to answer is, were we living too much behind the line? Can we get something in a half-court set? And their problem is when they've driven the ball to the basket, the shots have been highly contested. There's a nice dump. Robertson tried to dump it to McCreary. He couldn't hang on. Turned over to Florida State. And Florida State is playing very well on the offensive end. The drive forces the defender to commit. Nobody comes over to help out, and Corrin is wide open for the dunk. That's an excellent pass by Green. But that's all created off the dribble penetration. If you can force the defense to react and help, generally you can get a pretty good shot if you keep the ball moving. Cleveland thought about the catch and shoot. Now he'll put it on the deck, drive, can't finish. Corrin inside, one dribble and the rebound and the score. Cameron Corrin back-to-back -back field goals, asserting a bit of a presence inside. Well, you drive the ball to the basket. The defense has to come and help out. There's nobody to block out. Pressure on the backside. The jump shot no good from McCreary. Maybe a little bit rushed because of the pressure. House a catch and shoot. He checked in. I, he hasn't shot the ball yet. How can he think he's hot? <laughs> Under nine to go. Ball deflected away into the bench area. Certainly. Mercer makes a change. Jordan Jones, a sophomore from Macon, coming into the lineup for the Bears. There's a look at Jones. But if that's your first shot, Wes, and you're doing a heat check, then you're a very confident shooter. Well, I mean, the book on Young House from Dayton, Ohio is... That he's a shooter. Confident. Confident shooter, Dan. This is Hurtado, who is scoreless so far. Wes, but after the first five or six minutes of this game, you could just see the Florida State defense tighten up. Mercer has not been able to get the ball from side to side. They haven't been able to get penetration to create those open opportunities. Yeah. Luis Hurtado. Kick out Zanoni for three. Knocks it in and a foul. The goal will count for Zanoni. He's got eight in the ball game now on his second triple. I thought I saw the official signal 11. No, but it's five. It's McCreary. Yep, McCreary draws five. his first. Seventh team foul. Okay, it's the seventh team foul. That's what she was signaling. Yep. It was a one and one. So one and one at the other end for Cameron Corrin. That's the first time in a while, though, that Mercer has been able to get inside that defense and create an open three-point shot yep. opportunity. And so it's not a matter, Wes, of living and dying by the three. Mm. You have to take the shots that you can get, and Florida State has been really good at cutting off the middle. That is the uh, sixth three of this first half for Mercer. There's Corrin nicely done on the one-and-one. One. Cameron Corrin is from Allen, Texas. But he's got roots in the southeast. His dad, Richard Corrin, was a terrific player of the 1983 Final Four Georgia Bulldogs. Featured Vern Fleming and James Banks for the legendary Florida State coach, later Georgia coach, Hugh Durham. Hugh Durham. No relation. Corrin hit a boat. Well, Corrin is a guy who's not necessarily known as a power guy inside. He's more of a pick and pop kind of outside shooter type. Yeah. Here's Robertson on the drive, and it rattled out for it. And how hotly contested was that? A layup, yes, but a good shot, I don't know. And look at Corrin around the glass a third time here, and Worley ends up scooping it up. Fresh 20 for Florida State. Cleveland. Off the Corrin screen at 18 feet. Air ball. And it hit the inline out of bounds. It will go to Mercer. Four-point lead for the Knowles here. Warren has affected this game, West simply by hustling up and down the court. I agree. And you look at Jones, who will bring it through the backcourt now. Kid has uh, played 10 games for him last year after injuries forced him into the lineup. Yep. We'll get a timeout. Florida State's got a four-point lead. Cameron Corrin's had a pretty good few minutes here on the floor for Leonard Hamilton. The dunk off the lob from Green. Back in a moment.
Well, Florida State, four point lead under eight to go in this first half with Dan Bonner, West Durham. We walked you into our coverage tonight on ACC Network. Dan, dare I say, guys like Cameron Corrin, who we've talked about, even to a degree, Jalen Worley, they're kind of adding a little spark to the punch here. They've really picked it up on the defensive end, yep. Wes, as we've talked about a couple of times. And I don't think you can overstate the fact that they've already played 10 guys so far mm. here in the first half. Zanoni with Craig Jones, Hurtado, and Robertson on the floor for Mercer with the basketball. Fletcher, Cleveland, Green, Worley, and McLeod are out there for Coach Hamilton. McLeod and Craig inside is probably worth your time if you're watching this ball game. Not too often you get to see 7 4 and 7 2 draw it up at the post in the college game. Hurtado has not scored tonight, nope. Wes. And, and taken uh, only one shot, Dan. Deep three green. Wow. Craig, the nice box out of McLeod. Now, Craig is not a guy who's going to go very far to get a rebound, but if it comes in his area, he's going to grab it. Yep. There's a screen to allow Robertson. Now Hurtado the three. Backside rebound, Cleveland Knowles looking to run. Look at Matthew Cleveland. Skip through, out front. Jaden Worley, three ball. Right at the top of the line, first triple of the year for the young man from suburban Philly. Wes, and that's what we are talking about the last time. You drive the defense back, they get set, but if you move the ball quickly, you can get an open one. Robertson, kick out Hurtado. Lead is seven for the Knowles. That's a really good job by Fletcher to force Robertson to reload. Craig, kind of a screen that allowed Robertson to pull the trigger. Uh, Craig is going to screen you. You're going to be screened. Well, no question. Worley on the drive. McLeod tried to keep it alive. Slapped around. Here's Fletcher. Johnny on the spot. Scoop it up. He's got 12 in the first half. Worley couldn't get the ball, but he slapped it to a teammate. Nice job by the Knowles to attack the offensive board. And with that, we're going to get a timeout. Mercer wants to reload here a little bit. Greg Gary's team trails nine. 6.15 to go. Everything you've seen me do. Move. The defense, you saw all the black shirts get in the lane, but the pass outside, the dribble draws the defenders. Nobody's there to pick up Worley. And again, you say he's not noted as a three-point shooter, but Cleveland created that whole play yep. with the rebound and pushing the ball. First three of the year for Worley. Gets him on the board from the floor. And what you're seeing, Wes, is that the Seminoles have been able to play in transition, and the Bears are having to play in a half-court set, yep. and that Florida State defense is just really tough. Yep. Alternating possession will keep it with Mercer, 10 to shoot for Greg Gary's team. Generally, Wes, your shooting percentage is a direct result of the quality of the shots. Yep. Yeah. And Greg Gary's guy, after getting some good shots early, have really struggled against an intense Florida State defense. The quality of their shots has gone way down. So Cleveland and Worley are out. Chandler Jackson with Caleb Mills. Now, Dan, we talked about this, I believe, briefly here a few minutes ago. Mills at times has been playing the point, but when Jackson's out there, we know Chandler Jackson's going to be the point guard. Florida State couldn't close out. Walker got it swatted back. Now Craig and McLeod. And Craig gets the roll. They're squaring off on a different floor from the rest of the teams. Absolutely. <laughs> Those guys live in a little higher life. Jackson into the corner. Florida State lead trim to seven on the first bucket from freshman David Craig. Here is Fletcher. Mills sets one handed push on the three is good. Just the second three of the year for Caleb Mills. Well, Mills, that's not the strength of his game, but if you give him that much time and that much room, he's going to be able to knock it down. Biggest lead of the night for Florida State. Double figures just ahead of five minutes. Hurtado, kick out for Walker. Well covered by Green there, Dan. Nice recovery. 
Here is Robertson by everybody. Couldn't finish. Zanoni runs it down. Fresh 20 for Mercer. Craig inside. Tried to scoop it out. Got, somehow got it through to Hurtado and now Walker. Oh boy. Missed everything. Wes, this is just a situation where the defense has the Bears in a big hurry. Yep. See Zanoni playing Mills for the drive, and that's what you have to do. But when he rises up to shoot that ball, you got to put more pressure on him. Mills wants to take it and go by you. Everybody knows that. You see the three-point shooting numbers for both schools, well over 40%. Mercer has only hit, by my count, Dan, three regular field goals in his first half. Here's McLeod rolling with the left hand again. Now McLeod got it over McCreary before. McCreary six feet eight, a little more difficult that time against Craig. So now, Kamara Robertson, the senior from Alpharetta, Georgia, trying to go to work here on the drive. Into traffic, Zanoni. Here's Walker with five to shoot, pull up. And the rebound, Fletcher. Got to figure out a way, I think, to put the ball in the hands of that big guy. Mills all the way through. Tried to go back to Worley and last touch by the Knowles. And that will get us to the under four media timeout. Ten point lead though, Leonard Hamilton's team. 346 to go first half at the Tucker Center. Out of owners, insures your car. You gotta get them going to games early, right? Yeah, you gotta get them hydrated and you gotta get them that popcorn. That's it. Gotta have the popcorn, right? Mike Young will tell you that at Virginia Tech. You gotta have the popcorn, right? Wow, of course, Mike Young, absolutely. Yeah. If they were gonna give him an NIL deal, it would be for popcorn. That would be for the popcorn. So away we go here. 346 to go in the first half. Florida State's defense changed this first half, or the ability to get a little deeper into the bench change this first half. Wes, I think the two go together. When you get out there, you feel like you can play harder because you know you've got guys coming in for you. But I think the defense has really been a factor because it has forced Mercer into some tough baskets, tough attempts here late in the half. And while Florida State, they're not lighting it up, they're only shooting 43% from the field, that their defense has been good enough that They've been able to hold this 10-point lead. Walker, Robertson, Zanoni, Craig, McCrary on the floor for Greg Gary. With three and a half to go, Walker tried to find all the way through. Kick out for Robertson. The three wouldn't go down. Craig the rebound. McLeod there blocked it. Recovered by Fletcher. Ahead for Mills. Trying to find an alley and can't finish it. Worley the rebound. Green a three, sure. 15th three of the year for Darren Green Jr. Well, Wes, maybe a little force on that drive in transition, but the result was great because they got the rebound and Green in a situation where he can catch and shoot in transition. He is a dangerous three-point shooter. Mercer, one of their last 11 from the floor, make it 12. Zanoni had that block by Worley. Here's Mills. I move the ball. Fletcher a three. Wow. Well, move the ball to Fletcher. That's the second consecutive transition three. He's got 15 in the first half, matches his season high. The lead is 16. Lob catch, McCreary snaps a bit of a drought for the Bears with his third field goal. Bears really having to work hard to get any kind of a shot. Yep. Here is Green. McLeod set a nice screen. Foul line jumper short. 2.05 to go. Here's Robertson. Almost had it poked away, but able to keep it alive on the dribble. Zanoni. Lob for Craig. Big fellow to catch and one. So Craig will go the chance for the three-point play at the line, but Florida State's attacking from the perimeter at their offensive end here in the last couple of exchanges. They've been able to get out in transition, and this is after an offensive rebound in transition. You can't get back to the shooter 
And then again, the ball goes into the corner. Nobody's picking up Fletcher. But that, how about that pass by Zanoni? It was perfect. But Craig, he, he threw in a spot where Craig could catch it and make a move. And Craig isn't the most mobile guy in there. Right. When you hit him with the ball, when he's in position and he has his feet set, he's hard to stop. I don't care if McLeod is seven feet four. So Craig, after his second field goal, knocks down the free throw. So he's got five in the first half. I think this is an important last minute and 50 I think seconds so too. for both teams. Yep, I agree with you on that. Foul line, McLeod. Maybe that's not the shot they were looking for. There might be a reason he was open for that. Yep. Mercado who was scoreless in the first half. Working against Deontay Green. Here's Robertson a catch and shoot. Can't leave him open, can you? Six for Kamar Robertson. Well, he was able to set his feet that time, Wes. The defensive pressure wasn't there. And Leonard Hamilton wants a quick timeout. He's going to use the use it or lose it 30 here because, quite frankly, it's been cut down to single digits after the three ball by Robertson. Back after this. ACC football all season on ACC Network with Xfinity. Well, campus for the most part's on a break, so anybody here helping with the band, bless them, right, Dan? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Folks try to steal a few days away. Basketball's on the road tomorrow. They'll be in uh, the Orlando area for ESPN events starting on Thursday. Large football game here Saturday. Not, uh, yeah. Friday night, actually, I should Friday say. Friday night. Yep. Florida, Florida State on ABC. Now, what do we got here? I think they put Green in, and now they're taking him out. Well, House can't come in until the ball is played because House, Green came back on the floor, right? Well, they put Green in, and you can't take him out. Until the ball is played. Until there's some time runs off the clock. Yeah. Mercer on an 8-0 run to cut this thing down to eight. Here is Chandler Jackson. Nice screen from McLeod, pull up jumper. Too strong, Jackson the rebound from behind Robertson. Cleveland in the Knowles, a new 20. Florida State has dominated their offense. Yep. Points. They've done a great job getting second opportunities. Out of the corner, Green fires. Rebound Jackson, right back inside. Cleveland couldn't finish it. Well, they had some pretty good looks. <laughs> 40 seconds to go in this first half. Robertson on the drive. That's a tremendous job by McCurry to cut him off. Craig, the rebound from behind McLeod. And almost threw it beyond the reach of Walker. <laughs> Five second differential, shot clock to game clock. We go down the stretch here. Walker with Cleveland defending. Here is Walker off the Craig screen. Puts it up over McLeod. Rebounded with three seconds left. Darren Green from half court. Spun out. Florida State's going to take the lead, though, to the locker room. 42 34, Dan. Uh, really good effort by Florida State defensively in those 42 points. You like to see that. We said they had to create some easy opportunities, and they did so. The State went almost three minutes without a point. So Greg Gary in his fourth year in Macon, and a team that is uh, trying to play toward that front half of the Southern Conference, which is a terrific, by the way, mid-major basketball league. They'll see Florida State on the attack here first. There's Mills, a little soft fall away. Boy, Craig starts the second half. Big fellow with a nice box out of McLeod. And here is Hurtado, who went scoreless 
for the opening 20 minutes and played almost 16 of those 20. Well, he had four assists. Yep. Ten to shoot. Robertson. Now to Walker. Lob for Craig. McLeod on it. Back for Walker's three. And the rebound for Naheem McLeod. That was a situation where I think Walker could have cut to the corner and got a better look from three. Yep. You can't just throw it to the big guy and stand. You got to give him an outlet. So here's McLeod and now Mills to set the offense. He plays with Darren Green Jr. Here's Green. Bounce pass into the corner. On the drive and the dunk, Cam Fletcher. 17 now for Fletcher. That's really a confident move by Fletcher. You know, Craig's not a big shot blocker. He's a big man, but he's not really a shot blocker. Fletcher not intimidated at all. Hurtado, nice give and go, and then they got poked away by Green. They roll to the deck, and Craig somehow reaches down around everybody, pulls it out of there, and now all of a sudden, a missed three by Robertson, and Mercer comes away empty. I think for Mercer, when you get those open opportunities, it's really important that you convert a high percentage. Let's go back to the drive and the dunk here a moment ago by Fletcher. Well, this is a situation where Fletcher gives the fake, McCreary's out of position, and Craig, you know, he doesn't want to go and pick up a foul, and he also doesn't want to step there because if he does, then McLeod, the seven foot four guy, is all alone under the basket. Just a really good, aggressive play by Fletcher. Caleb Mills is 12 of 14 at the line this year. Two shot opportunity, and the first one is good. Don't forget, coming up next tonight, game two of our ACC Network doubleheader. Mike Monaco, Malcolm Huckabee standing by at Cameron Indoor Stadium tonight, Dan. And Bellarmine continues its ACC. I was getting ready to say adjunct membership for uh, Scott Davenport <laughs> and the Knights as they see number seven Duke tonight around 8.30. We'll send you to Cameron with Mike and Huck. There's a quick fall away and nicely done by McCreary. Now, to your point, Dan, a moment ago, Hurtado with a nice delivery of the basketball. And that's really McCreary's game. He's somebody that's got a score in the mid-range and around the basket. Cleveland trying to wind off the screen of McLeod. Didn't quite catch it all. Fletcher will. Look at this little soft one-hander. Maybe he should have stopped and passed that ball or pulled up and shoot a jump shot. Hurtado working on Mills. Lead is nine for the Knowles and Hurtado around McLeod. And now we're going to get a whistle and a foul, I think, on... Looks like it's going to be inside on Green. It is. Well, Hurtado does a really nice job finding McCreary inside. And I think Fletcher thought he was going to try to drive it to the basket, but McCreary, he's, like I say, he's a very good short range jump shooter and knocked out and down. So here's David Craig, 7'2, 270 pounds, a freshman from Johannesburg in South Africa. It's his second free throw. He's got a half dozen. And Greg Gary says. But Craig spends time with a graduate assistant or a manager shooting at least 100 free throws every day. That Greg Gary told him, he said, hey, look, you're a big guy inside. You're going to get fouled. Yep. You're going to score a lot of points if you can make free throws. Yep. He hit them both. The lead cut to seven. Almost three minutes gone here in the second half. Remember, the Knowles had a pretty comfortable halftime lead on Friday night. Cleveland knocks down a three. Matthews got seven now in the ball game. That's just his second field goal. And Florida came all the way back, ultimately won the ball game by nine the other night. I'm sure in somewhere in Leonard Hamilton's mind, he's thinking about the sequential nature of the second half tonight for his club as Walker answers Cleveland's three with one of his own. He's got nine on three triples. To a seven point game. Quick pass. Here's Green. Returns it to Cleveland over the top of Craig. Now we just saw Cleveland make a three, but the strength of his game is that mid-range game right there. And that's against a Mercer zone. Good ball movement to find the open man. Yep. Nine for Cleveland. The lead nine for Florida State. Here's Hurtado. Blocked out of there by McLeod. It will stay. 
with the Bears. And Jalen Worley going to check in. Here's another look at the three from Cleveland. Cleveland's just all alone. We said that's not his strength, but when you get that much time, that's like shooting in an open gym. Fletcher tries to put a little pressure on, but nice job by Walker. Here's the lob for Walker. Now Craig with McLeod inside. McLeod got a piece of it, and last touch by the Bears. That's a really good job by McLeod. Craig is a big man. and He's tall, obviously, but so is McLeod. But Craig must outweigh him by 40 or 50 pounds. No question. And McLeod did not allow himself to get pushed out of the way. Green. Slides through. Nice pass. Fletcher. A little reverse up and under move. Cam Fletcher. 19 now in the ball game, Dan. Really a clever move. He was blocked on the one side, just made a pivot, and went around under the basket. Career high for Cameron Fletcher. He's been very active on both ends of the field. Yep. Here's McCrary, and the cloud altered that. Green, skip for Cleveland. Oh, nice move. 18-footer left it on the front rim. Hurtado and Mercer. Zanoni waiting at the table for the Bears. He's been... Arguably one of the more impactful three-point shooters. Here's Robertson caught in the air. He'll be fouled by Fletcher. That will get us to a timeout. Two fouls on the Knoll, second on Fletcher. 11-point lead for Florida State when we come back. Tonight from the Knoll zone, student group even during the Thanksgiving holidays and attendance here tonight at the Tucker Center. And a good chance to remind you that there are all amazing fans across the ACC. And now during this final week of the regular season, early basketball, we need your help. ACC Network wants to experience each sport from your perspective. So snap a picture, Dan, take a video, tag it with the hashtag, all the devotion, and post it to your social. You might see it on ACC Network. You have to wear funny costumes. Some would say we have funny costumes all the time. Well, okay, I, I, I'll buy that. Yeah. Free throws for Robertson out of the timeout. And the first one bounces out. Mercer has not really been able to get to the free throw line tonight. Florida State's done a nice job dominating the inside. Florida State with 20 inside points yeah. to Mercer six. And really good news for the Seminoles. They've had 13 points from their bench. Robertson got one of the two. He's got seven. Five minutes into the second half. It's a 10-point lead. House has come on the floor. So is Cameron Corrin. He's got the ball at the top against McCreary. Corrin can give Leonard Hamilton's team that boost he did in the first half, right? Well, Corrin was really good in the first half. Six points, four rebounds, two assists in less than five minutes of playing time. Cleveland is going to turn that over, trying to find, I think, Corrin on the baseline. Well, Mercer switches back to the man-to-man -man with Craig on the bench. All right. Leonard Hamilton not really happy that time with the way his team reacted. Yep. But he's got to be pleased with the defensive pressure. Hurtado against Worley. Picks up on the dribble of Zanoni. Robertson, real three-guard flavor here. It's only 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Yep, Robertson, kick out for Walker. In the lane, nice pass, McCreary the bucket. 10 for Jalen McCreary. And again, that's McCreary's sweet spot, right around the goal with that little left-handed jump shot. Lead down to eight for the Knowles. Worley tried to go inside, deflected away. Corrin's got it with 10. He's got a mismatch against Robertson. Back for Worley's runner. Fell off the iron, rebounded McCreary. Well, says Corrin gets more experience, he's going to recognize that mismatch. That's a play that he needed to make rather than pass the ball. Yep. So here's Walker. Mercer got to feel like this. McCreary gets baseline and dunks it home. He's got six and a half and 12 in the game. 
was getting ready to say Mercer's got to feel like maybe there's a window here to crawl back into this, and they've taken advantage. There's a drive by Green. He couldn't finish. Now the Bears down six. Florida State, the ball movement has not been there here in this little stretch. Robertson. Oh, good heavens. And the drive. Four in, or three and a half. Nine in the game and a timeout for Leonard Hamilton. It's down to four. 12.51 to go. Mercer on the run to cut it down to two possessions. Why pay overall? It's been a couple times in about the last 11 clock minutes of the game. And really it feels like the Bears might be trying to leaning in here on a run too. Well, they are, and they've done a nice job creating situations. The defensive pressure not quite as intense. That's really one of the first times we've seen them get to the basket, certainly for a dunk. But remember, McLeod is out of the game, and the guy who was out on the perimeter, Corrin, is the guy who got beat off the dribble, so there's no shot blockers back there. Yeah. And remember, Wes, with 2.47 left in the first half, Florida State was ahead by 16. Right. Well, Mercer has chopped 12 points off this lead in about 10 minutes. Well, they went on an 8-0 run to finish the first half. That's how it went from 16 to 8 at the break. And now here, you go back and look at it, it's a, essentially an 18-4 run by the Bear. 18-6 run, Dan. Excuse me. 42-34 at halftime. It's 52-48 now, right? And the other thing, the Senators aren't playing in transition. Right? That's it. Playing against a set defense, and that's been a little tougher. Here's Caleb Mills, seven to shoot. Now Cleveland slash kick out three ball. Jackson spins out the rebound from McCreary. Again, they were getting easy opportunity yep. and the ability to move the ball in transition, but they haven't been playing in transition. Screen from McCreary. Here's Hurtado lobbing and oh, layup good. Oh, that was a great pass and a great cut. Seminoles caught a little flat foot. 14 now for Jalen McCreary, eight in the second half. Lead cut to two. Cleveland. Now for Jackson. Got to move the ball. Yep. Mills waits on the screen. Here's Cord. This is Fletcher, who's their leading scorer. Six to shoot. Now Mills. Three to shoot. He'll have to take Robertson. Skip. Jackson. Shot clock violation. Stepped out of bounds. No, before the clock expired. So Leonard Hamilton's team. An unforced error in a moment ago. Here's that lob for McCreary. 24 to 10 run by the Bears. They're to within two when we come back. The run has been the uh, play of the South Florida transfer, Jalen McCreary. Well, he's been really good, Wes. He's got eight points here in the second half, and he's done it basically around the basket. They, they keep losing him on the inside. He's done a nice job catching it and shooting, particularly when he's able to get to that left hand. And then this is just a drive to the basket. The defense is not able to pressure the ball. And this is just a great lob pass. Yep. Corrin's guarding him, and Corrin got caught watching the dribbler, and McCurry took advantage and went back to Florida State brings McLeod, Cleveland, Fletcher, Jackson, and Mills back to the floor. Hurtado, Robertson, Walker, Zanoni, and McCreary out there for uh, Greg Gary's club. Well, let's see how McCreary's able to match up with McLeod. That's, that was a tough matchup for him in the first half. Because, again, he's a guy who plays around the basket, and McLeod is a little difficult guy to play around on the inside. Yep. Mainly because you can't play around him, you got to play over him, and he's seven feet four. Walker in the backcourt against Cleveland. Sean Walker from Northeastern North Carolina at Elizabeth City. Veteran player in the Mercer program. Here's Rotato. In the corner, Robertson standing three for the lead. Kamar Robertson. A dozen in the ballgame. That's his third three of the night. Well, they had a double team inside against McCreary, and they left Robertson alone. Yep. 
Florida State on the lob from McLeod. Backing down McCreary. Threw it away to Hurtado. I think he was trying to skip it for Cleveland. Luis Hurtado, the layup too strong. I'll tell you what, McLeod made a mistake throwing that ball away, but he ran down the court to get that rebound. Sure did. Mills redirects on the dribble and scores. Tough shot for Caleb Mills, third field goal. The West, he takes tough shots, but he can make tough shots, and he can score a lot of points in a hurry. Yep. Still got ten and a half minutes to go, and it feels like we're playing the last ten seconds, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. There's a lot of intensity out here suddenly on both ends of the court. Walker, here's Hurtado. Baseline move, skip back, McCreary over McLeod. Jalen McCreary now, 10 and a half, 16 in the ball game to lead Mercer. How high did he arc that shot? Unbelievable. McLeod, McLeod wants the ball inside. And Cleveland going to take it on the drive and whistle a foul. I believe we have a block underneath the basket here. Well, McCreary tried to block the shot. Jalen McCreary's hurt, by the way. He got hit in the face. going to be on McCreary, which is a little worse for the wear, if you will, but he was inside the arc. I, I, I don't think he got called, West for being inside the arc because he jumps oh, in the air. Oh, there it jumps is, right. Jumps in the air, he gets an elbow in the face as he tries to block the shot, but that arm came down, and he hit Cleveland on the arm. So that's the worst of all worlds. You get smacked in the face, possibly you have a bloody nose, and you get called for the foul. McCreary going to go out of the ball game. And Daniel, or David Craig will check in. Matthew Cleveland going to go to the line here. And it'll be interesting to see what happens now because McCreary's mobility and, right. and the ability to score against the Florida State defense has been a big part of this Mercer comeback. So Cleveland at the line for a pair. He's two for two tonight. First one good. Don't forget ACC football coming up this weekend on ACC Network. Primetime at the Hard Rock in Miami Gardens. Pittsburgh and Miami. Pat Narduzzi's team, after a bit of a dip, has come back to win three straight, including a two-point victory over Duke last Saturday. And, of course, Miami lost in Clemson on Saturday. So Mario Cristobal's team needs a win to be bowl eligible. Both the free throws for Cleveland. You saw McCreary on the bench. Going to work his way back up to the seating area of Greg Gary's Pine. Meanwhile, Craig stays on the floor. Here's Hurtado. Now Walker flying to the basket over the top of McLeod. Got the bounce. Boy, Mercer oh. playing suddenly with a lot of confidence. West taking the ball to the basket. Yep. Walker pushes the Bears back in front. There's Cleveland for McLeod. Cleveland has such versatility, Wes. Drives the ball into the lane, forces Craig to commit, and McLeod just follows the defender, and he's all alone. Yep. Florida State by one. Walker back inside. Here's Craig, and he's going to count it in a foul. Basket for Craig. The foul is going to be on Matthew Cleveland, and there's the follow shot. And here's a look at the McLeod finish. Now McLeod just follows his man to the basket, and that's that's a really heads-up play. Nobody rotated over. They call the foul on McLeod, not Cleveland. The third on Florida State. Yeah, the big guy showed a nice touch from the free throw line. Yep. All those free throws in practice must be paying off. Puts the Bears in front of pair. Under nine to go. Worley. Got to move the ball. Yep. Out front, Fletcher. He had the hot hand early and ties the game. Hill has the hot hand. 21 now for Cameron Fletcher. And Jenna Renault has stopped play for a moment.
with 8.39 to go. I think it was a shot clock. I do too, yep. Allows Leonard Hamilton to hop into the full court press too. Hurtado into Robertson. Well, the Seminoles had some success with this pressure in the first half. Yep, there's Fletcher. Now hands to Worley. Plays over the top of the Craig screen nicely. Now Zanoni. Down to 10. Yep. Robertson trying to eye. Works to the right with four. Ball away two. And the rebound for Cleveland. Really good defense. Yep. And Fletcher has been very active on the defensive end as well tonight, Wes. Cleveland. Step in two. Got it. Matthew Cleveland. I got him with nine now. And that mid-range jump shot is going to be there if McLeod sets a screen because Craig is playing back inside. Yeah, nine in the second half, 13 on the night for the Atlanta sophomore. Walker the runner. Craig the rebound. They battle inside. McLeod bothered it. Craig got it back, looking to reset. Dropped the ball, and it was stolen out of there. Craig commits the foul as Florida State broke free from underneath. Wes Walker had the opportunity for a layup, and he elected to take that floater, and that really hurt him. The Seminoles with the two-point lead, they have the ball. I'm the captain of the Pee Wee football. Two-point game tonight in Tallahassee with Dan Bonner, West Durham. We welcome you back to our coverage tonight on ACC Network. Florida State trying to get their first win of the year. It's been a rock fight at times for Leonard Hamilton, really kind of at both ends of the floor. Dan, regardless of what transpires tonight, they've played pretty well at the defensive end, I think. Yeah, they really have, Wes, and very, very well in stretches. And their offense today has been keyed by Cleveland. He's got 13, and Fletcher's got 21. Yeah. Florida State's hit their last four shots on the floor. By the way, they've got a season high in blocks tonight with eight. And to show you how improved that is defensively, you take Stetson, UCF, and Troy combined, they only had seven blocks in those three games. Not individually, all three. And they've got eight here tonight. Well, McCreary is back in the game as the Bears looking for a little bit of offense. Yep. Although Craig has 10 points and 12 rebounds. Mills trying to find a way around Robertson. McLeod inside of the dunk. Naheem McLeod has got a half dozen. And they, they just can't match up with him inside unless Craig is in the game. Six points, six rebounds, three blocks. But when you get that penetration, forces the defense to come and try to stop the ball handler. And McLeod does a nice job getting into good offensive rebounding position. McCrary, Zanoni is a hard shooter from the perimeter. Walker with a nice set of moves, but can't beat 7-4. Here's Robertson, now Walker from in front of his coach, and a shot clock violation. Walker went down. Greg Gary not happy with the call, or no call, I should say. That's a really impressive job by McLeod to just stick with it. Here, he gets the ball inside, just pushes McCreary out of the way. But on the defensive end, he moved his feet, he prevented Walker from getting around, and then he blocked a desperation three. And now an offensive foul on Worley. And, and that's that's gotta be frustrating to Leonard Hamilton because you get the sense that the game is turning right yep. now. I'm with you. So now after that turnover, can Mercer answer? I think, like, again, we're in one of those stretches where an important stretch of the game for both teams. Seventh turnover by Florida State. Remember, they only had three at the half, which was their best half of the year so far. Hurtado. Here's Zanoni. Better defensive pressure. McLeod out there on Hurtado, who tries to beat him on the dribble and does. First, first point. Luis Hurtado, Jr. That's a big basket. 
And Worley going to be fouled racing it to the front court. I think they got Zanoni. Yep. You know, Zanoni is a really good shooter, but at this stage in his development as a defender, he sometimes has a tough time staying in front of people. Michael Zanoni is a freshman from Charlotte who played for the legendary Freddie Johnson at Greensboro Day School, Dan, in North Carolina. But he can shoot it. Sure can. Just the fourth foul on Mercy. There's Mills. Nice feed to Cleveland. We see Mills take and force that one, try to get it up to the basket, but recognizing the collapsing defense, finds the open man. 15 for Cleveland in the ball game. Lead to four. We still have a lot of time left in yep. the game, but each one of these possessions suddenly feels really important. There is McCreary, and the oh, tap follow good. What a play by McCreary. Yep. Two-point game again. Cleveland. Lob for McLeod now. Here's the advantage he had in that first half. Back for Cleveland with 15 to shoot. Mills pushes one up. I don't like that shot, not with 15 on the shot clock. Mills has made a three today, but he's not a three-point shooter, and that was a contested three. Hurtado can tie with a two. That's Quinones. It's been a good bit of the first half in foul trouble. And now we are tied. That's a great job by McCurry inside. Florida State switches screens. He had a mismatch. He called for the ball. He was patient. He was able to get it up over the cloud. Jalen McCreary's got 20. The game is tied, and McCreary commits the foul. This is really a nice job by McCreary. He's patient. Doesn't let the defense come, and then he knows McLeod is back there, but it doesn't bother him. He's not playing against McLeod. He's playing against Worley. McCreary's got 20. Season high 22 against Milligan. And here is Worley at the line. One of two tonight. 11 of 19 this year in the free throw good. You see Darren Green, Tom House return for Florida State. Fletcher and Mills out for Coach Hamilton. I think you're just trying to give McCurry a breather. He's got three fouls and you want to have him fresh. And the second one for Morley good. Eight now for the sophomore. Mount Airy, Pennsylvania. Two point lead for Florida State. Robertson. Hurtado. Uses the Craig screen. Backs down on Green over the top of McLeod. Craig had a shot at it, knocked toward the corner where Cleveland collects it. Lead for McLeod and the basket. Got knocked down by Craig. Naheem McLeod on a great lead from Matthew Cleveland, Dan. Uh, it's a great lead, but McLeod runs. Naheem four of five from the floor tonight. For his eight points. That's just a great job running out on the break. I mean, he was in the middle of that scrum under the basket, but he got down the court. Timeout taken by Mercer. Greg Gary wants to talk about it. But a moment ago, Matthew Cleveland. Jordan Travis might want to get a look at that. <laughs> the lead for McLeod and the bucket. Knowles by four when we continue from Tallahassee. Auto Owners protects your home. For the state leading Mercer, the Knowles have hit seven of their last nine from the floor, Dan, to take this advantage. And they've kind of come in all shapes and sizes here. Yeah, it sure has. Florida State, again, they've turned it up defensively. Remember, they gave up the lead and Mercer went ahead. We'll see Matthew Cleveland with House, McLeod. And McLeod has been a big factor. Yeah, he has. Yep. Played very well. Particularly in this late rally by Florida State. He's got eight points, seven rebounds, five blocks. And Mercer's got the basketball with Hurtado, Craig, 
Zanoni, Walker, and Kamar Robertson. And 11 to shoot for the Bears. Zanoni right there, house defensively. Now Craig. Over the top of McLeod, couldn't finish. Naheem, another rebound, is eighth. You know, Robertson was over on the side, but he did not give Craig a place to throw the ball. You got to move to an open spot where your big guy can see you. He would have been all alone for the three. House. Generally, offense doesn't work as well if you sting. Here's McLeod trying to help Orley to the basket. Over the top of Craig, couldn't finish it. Zanoni the rebound now, Hurtado and the Bears. To find the seam out front Walker. Here's Robertson by Green, held in the air and fouled by Green. Darren Green Jr., his third, five on Florida State. And Mercer has been very aggressive in transition, and that's just a really nice job by Robertson to hang up in the air yeah. and wait for the foul. And that's a situation where Green. He has to trust his guy behind him. He got beat, but McLeod is standing back there. What is the six-foot Robertson going to do? Yep. Kamar Robertson, one of two at the line. Dan, he came in 11 of 13 at the line this year. And obviously, every opportunity is big here. Yep. For Greg Gary's guys, you can't afford to squander any of them. Second one ready. Also spun out. Guy who came in at 85% through four games is one for four. If you're the Bears, you need to stop. Yep. Here's Cleveland. He'll take Hurtado, and there's the foul on Luis Hurtado. That'll be his second. That is five on Mercer, which is okay, right? With 225 yeah. to go. That's a point of emphasis here this year, Wes. He starts his drive, and Hurtado had both hands on him. Yep. Fresh 20 on the shot clock. Morley, oh, McLeod calling for it. McCreary there. Now Cleveland. Matthew bumped and fouled as he cut it loose. And that's a third on Hurtado, and six now on Mercer. Cleveland has done a great job putting pressure on Hurtado. And if Cleveland's going to catch the ball out there, Wes, I think Hurtado's got to give him a step because Cleveland's going to look to drive it. And Hurtado has got caught a couple of times now. Yep. 11 and a half, 15 in the ball game for the sophomore from Atlanta. Two shots here for Matthew Cleveland. First one, no good. A year ago against the ACC, he averaged a dozen points, five rebounds, shot 44% from the floor. Now, this is a must-score situation for Mercer, I think. Yep. Simone, at the bottom of your screen of the corner. There's McCreary, and it spins out. Boy, it's been a good spot for him most of the second half. That's a shot he's made all night, and a great Recognition by Hurtado that he had the mismatch and a great pass. 18 to shoot. Five-point game. Florida State got to be conscious with the ball. Here is Green. That's a long two. Darren Green, Jr.'s second field goal gives him five and the lead seven, Dan, with 90 seconds. And that might be enough. That's really a good play by Green. Didn't take the tough three, stepped inside. Hit to two. And a timeout for Greg Gary. A little bit of patience, I thought. Maturity, maybe, a word you might want to use to describe the possession by Leonard Hamilton's team. Well, it's really a good possession because Worley gets in and then steps back. He sees the open man. And what makes that play is that Green recognizes the penetration, goes and finds the open spot, and then reacts when the defender comes out and attacks him. The defender knows that he's a three-point shooter. And I'll tell you, that's so valuable as a three-point guy where you can just dribble, step inside that yeah. line, and knock down the mid-range jump shot. Well, Florida State will load up tomorrow and head to the Orlando area. And they'll be part of the ESPN events 
tournament at Walt Disney World. They'll see Sienna out of the MAAC on Thursday. And then on Friday, they'll play either Stanford or Ole Miss. Dan. Meanwhile, Mercer's headed to Savannah for an MTE that features Robert Morris on Friday and Fairfield on Saturday for Jed Gary's team. This is always an interesting time of the year. As we found out last week in our visit with Chapel Hill and Carolina, both those schools that night, Carolina and uh, the way you're looking at those games, Dan, you've got to be concerned about the rhythm of your own basketball team and what you find out about your team before you get ready for the next game. Well, and you play those games that's this time of year, those yep. tournaments, those events, so you can find out where you are. 15 to shoot, 75 seconds to go. Hurtado cuts it loose. And McLeod, another rebound. And that's probably enough, Wes. 105 to go in a seven-point game in Florida State now. Mercer can commit a foul, and there's Walker to do so on his first. That is the seventh or 18th foul, beg your pardon, on Mercer. So one and one coming here for Jaden War Jalen Worley. Wes, with the Florida State team that comes in 0-4, they had to be lacking a little bit of confidence to lose that lead and still come back and win the game. I think it has to be a very positive sign for Leonard Hamilton and his staff. So here is Worley to... See if he can make this an eight point game with under a minute to go. And the first one by the front end, the one and one, bounds out on him. Need a three. Sure do. Here's Robertson. There's Zanoni in the corner over Cleveland. I think, Air ball. I think Cleveland got a piece of it. Yep. Fletcher fouled in the backcourt. More free throws with 46.8 to go. And that's a sign of. Some basketball smarts there. Florida State knows they need to shoot a three, so they go out and cover. And that's the fifth foul on McCreary, I think. Yep. So the foul on Hurtado. Hurtado, okay. Yep. It is the fifth on Hurtado, who's going to foul out with a single field goal, but his contributions tonight came in a variety of other ways. Well, he really did a nice job finding open players. Yep. He had nine or ten assists, and his teammates missed like two or three other shots. Quinones into the lineup to spell Hurtado. Here is Cameron Fletcher at the line. And how about his off? He was terrific in the first half, and he's got seven here in the second half. He's got 22. By the way, Florida State's on an eight-nothing run, Dan, over here since it was tied at 66. And Wesson and they had to tie it at 66 because they fell behind. Yeah. Second one good. And in addition to his offensive effort, I thought Fletcher was really good defensively tonight. Yep. Here's Robertson sneaking through. McLeod blocked it. Robertson took a spill. Ron Gruber going to tick it. Yes, this looks more like the Florida State defensive teams that we're used to seeing, it's hard to get the ball all the way to the basket with those big guys back there. Now, yep. the difference with Florida State is they don't have so many big guys, and you can pronounce all their names. Usually, <laughs> they specialize in big guys, big guys with hard to pronounce names, but not this year. So, Kamar Robertson to the line, one for four tonight, two of five as he knocks that one down. And here comes Jordan, or Braden Sparks. I beg your pardon, first time we've seen Sparks, third appearance of the year. With under 40 seconds to go. He may be in the foul. I think you might be right. And Mercer is going to defend the inbounds pass. And here is Fletcher into McLeod, and there's the foul by Robertson. Kamar Robertson listed at six feet, chasing the seven for Naheem McLeod was something to see in the corner. And McLeod's going to get a pair of free throws oh, he's only on taken, the 10th foul. He's only taken two all year. And yep. Oh. Don't forget, number seven, Duke, 
waiting in the wings. Bellerman, the Knights of Scott Davenport, who so far in the ACC have beaten Louisville and lost at Clemson, Dan. Standing by, Mike Monaco, Malcolm Huckabee from the Crow's Nest at Cameron tonight. By the way, Derek Whitehead back in the lineup the other day against Delaware for Coach Shaw. So it feels like the Blue Devils have rounded into health, right? They've rounded into health, and now you got to put everybody together. That's it. Boy, Mitchell came on like a flurry. Lively is now back in the order. Interesting to watch Duke, especially as they kind of go through this Thanksgiving and semester schedule. And we'll have the Blue Devils Conference opener against Boston College for you here on ACC Network a week from Saturday. Timeout for 32.9 left in a seven point game. So Greg Gary will round his staff. Bobby Cummer, Kim Lewis, DJ Bird there. Well, they got, they got the free throw miss that they were looking for from McLeod, but if you're going to come back, now you got to come down and score. Right. And Wes, I, I don't think you have enough time to take a quick two and play defense or foul. I think you got to make threes at this point. Yep. You got to stand on the line a little bit. And Florida State knows that. Yep. At this point in the game, I don't think if you're the Seminoles, you worry about two point baskets. Yeah. Thought Greg Gary was candid with us, Dan. He knew his guards had to play well tonight. Well, and they just hurt. Her Tato, I think, gave him in certain aspects what he needed. He helped control the ball. They really didn't turn it over that much. But I, I, Hurtado's got to score a little bit. Yep. Hurtado's a guy that throughout his career, both at UAB and Bryant, has been a facilitator, a distributor. But Greg Gary told us that he said to Hurtado, hey, you got to score for us. And that's one thing that Hurtado was not able to do tonight. Yep. Those of you waiting on number seven, Duke and Bellerman, that ball game has begun on the ESPN app. We will be sending you live to Mike Monaco and Malcolm Huckabee as soon as we wrap it up here. Seven point game with 32.9 to go at the Tucker Center. Florida State trying to pick up their first win of the season after what has been a frustrating start for Leonard Hamilton and his staff and squad in a lot of different ways because of that chemistry thing we're talking about, Dan, that's been a real thing here with injuries and all the things they battled in addition to just new guys. Here's McCreary. Now Zanoni a three. Got it. Boy, that's a <laughs> that's a heck of a play right there. 11 for Michael Zanoni, who, by the way, played 24 minutes against Winthrop on Saturday, was scoreless, and missed all six of his threes. They threw the ball all the way across the court to McCreary, and he drew a lot of attention, and so Zanoni's able to step in. Clearly a three-point shot. So they'll take a look at it. Oh, they're looking at the clock. Is what we're being told by James Brady. So it is a three, we knew that. And they put two tenths of a second on the clock. The clock is supposed to stop when the ball goes through the basket. Good thing they're in charge and not us. Well, yes, it's all, that's always a good thing. <laughs> Heaven knows what would happen if we were in charge. That would anyway. not be good, I can promise you. Fletcher's got to get it in bounds here. Timeout taking Florida State. We got a four point game with 29 seconds left. Well, we might be to that Duke Bellerman game at halftime. No, no. So Leonard Hamilton. You know, if you're the Seminoles, the last 29.3 seconds is going to seem like an eternity. It is, right. And the point being here, you're upstairs with this as much as you are literally what's happening on the floor. Yep. This is as confident as Florida State has played though it feels like Dan but you still got to get this thing to the house if you're Ham and his team. Well you do but they've responded every other time right. that they needed to. Uh, Mercer came out and scored well and they were down early right. and they responded to that 
and then they built the big lead and lost it, and Mercer came back in the second half and actually went ahead, and the Seminoles responded to that. Yep. So they're in great position here. So you're probably gonna have to make some free throws. So you got Corin, Green, Mills, Fletcher, and Cleveland on the floor. Let's see who handles the ball here. Inbounds, Fletcher handles. Gets it to Mills. And there's the foul with 27.7 on Braden Sparks. <laughs> who you said was entering the ball game a moment ago to foul. Now, I'm an expert on that. The trick on this is, regardless of whether Caleb Mills hits one or two, it is still a two possession game. It just depends on the shot selection. And again, I don't think Mercer has any choice. They gotta go down and take a three. Right. Two shots for Caleb Mills. First one cleanly through. Now, I don't know that you have enough time, but the only strategy here is to trade two for three. And Zanoni would be job one defensively for Florida State. Second one good for Mills. And most of them have their timeouts. Double figures for Caleb Mills. Here is Walker in the backcourt. Mercer trapped. What good defense by the Knowles here and then Cleveland to steal. Matthew for the layup. 15 seconds left. Zanoni. Shot is blocked. Recovered on the baseline and a foul on Mercer. Matthew Cleveland's got a new season high, Dan, of 18. That's just great pressure by Florida State. You get that pressure on the ball. Walker a little bit desperate because he feels the 10 seconds running out. Cleveland looks like a defensive back there stepping in front of the receiver. Yep. A couple of free throws here for Mills. Could make it 10 with 10 seconds to go. If you're Leonard Hamilton, you like to see Mills at the free throw line. Yep. I thought Mills was much more under control tonight than maybe in a couple instances in those first four games. 81-71. Here's Robertson. Going to take it all the way down, and we're going to get a foul. On Green, challenging the drive. Stay tuned in 4.2, we'll send you to Durham. Well, it really doesn't matter, but that's a situation where you'd rather not commit the foul. All right. But so again, it, it, it makes no difference. Two shots for Kamara Robertson. If he makes the two shots, then they have the same two points you'd have given him. So here is Robertson for the first of two. And so it turns out to be a good foul because he doesn't get the two. Arkansas has beaten Louisville, Dan. Boston College a winner tonight. Utah's edged Georgia Tech so far. And Florida State's going to get their first win here. By the way, more coming up at the half of Bellarmine and Duke with Drew Carter and Carlos Boozer. But here tonight in Tallahassee, Florida State is going to win by 9, 81 72. Nice all round effort. Yep. Knowles are winners by nine, 81 72. Cameron Fletcher, a season high 23. For Dan Bonner and our great crew tonight at the Tucker Center, West Durham. Thanks for joining us. Now off to Cameron Indoor Stadium. Here's Mike Monaco and Malcolm Huckabee. <laughs>